Travel Tuesday. In this episode, we are going to Peru. I'll be going through my itinerary and answer a few common questions that I got asked about visiting Peru. So what inspired me to go there? I feel attracted to South America because of the Spanish influence. I want to keep up with my Spanish and I wanted to travel differently. I feel like my friends were all going to Asia in places such as Thailand, Indonesia, all of that. Don't get me wrong though. Asia is super beautiful and this part of the world I'm really looking forward to explore more in the coming years. I travel, let's just say that I travel slowly one continent at a time. Back to Peru. I wanted to go to the Amazon forest to find the gray and pink dolphin. I wanted to see Machu Picchu, of course, and eat all the food and drive quads in the desert. Peru seemed to be ticking all the boxes. You can surf, you can spend time in the Andes mountain and see the highest lake in the world, Titicaca. (laughs) Some cities are very modern and ancient at the same time. There are African, European and indigenous influences. There's also the Japanese who came there in 1800 to escape the war. And that's created all this fusion with the food. Um, it is called ni- Nikkei. That makes Peruvian food the most delicious in the world. Peru has a layer of 90 microclimate. So it's the most biodiverse country on earth. A single trip to Peru in this context, of course, will not allow you to experience all the microclimate, but there's a way you can. I will tell you more when we speak about Lima and how you can experience it. So what will be a suggested itinerary? I would suggest to go to the Amazon, then go to Cusco, climb Machu Picchu, then finish in Lima. And you can do that all over two weeks. And when you're in Lima, you can spend a day two in Paracas. Let's start in the Amazon forest. Peru has the most shaman in the world, (laughs) thanks to the Amazon, where people come to take ayahuasca, which is a plant used uh, as a medicine for thousands of years. But now people take it to find their inner self. Apparently it changed your life. Never took it myself, but the day it calls me, I probably will try it. But I would like to um, insist on everything that I've heard about it, that it has to call you. And people not to take it by curiosity or because some celebrity took it and you, you saw them speaking about it in social media and everything. So be very careful with all this ayahuasca ceremony, I would say. Anyway, <laughs> I'm deriving a bit there. Back to the itinerary. All this to say that I started in Iquitos in the north. It's a very hot and vibrant city with restaurants perched above the water. There's tuk-tuk taking you around town. I really lo- love that place. Then someone came to pick us up by boat to travel 140 kilometers deep into the jungle to stay in a lodge in a national reserve. We stayed there for a few days. The lodge was called Muyuna. I will link the in the note. What I like about this lodge, it was very authentic, sustainable, reasonably priced, about 500 US for five days with everything included, food activities. You can also pay double if you if you fancy it and go to one called Incatera. But I feel the clientele there was a bit older. And to be honest, I do prefer to stay in a lodge run by locals. I would suggest staying in the Amazon reserve for about five days as a minimum. The tour consists in taking you through a walk in the canopy forest. Then you go on boat on the river for bird watching, monkey hunting. We were hunting this, the smallest monkey in the world is called the Leoncito. We went fishing for piranhas and then we went around villages to see how people live there. There's also a day where you will go further deep into the river to encounter the gray and the pink dolphin. They can only f- be found in this type of water. You can also swim in that water, by the way. Unfortunately, due to the human destruction of the Amazon and the ecosystem sh- really shrinking, they have kind of disappeared because there's a lot of human activity and they don't like it. So I only got to see one, unfortunately. But the lodge try all the lodge around the area are trying to, to stay as sustainable as they can, but this is how, just how the nature works. So the lodge also organized after hours excursion to encounter the species that live at night, such as tarantula, alligators, frogs, nocturnal birds, and all sorts of mammals. They take you on, to, on a sunset boat tour, and it's just magical in, in the middle of nowhere, no Wi-Fi, no pollution, just completely connected with nature. So the Amazon forest was definitely one of the top experiences I had in Peru. Then we went to Cusco, 
which is a beautiful city, many things to see and do. You can easily spend weeks there and never get bored. From market to the food to all the activity around the region, it's super fun there. Cusco is the ancient capital of the Inca Empire, but then it was stolen from the Inca by the Spanish, who then nominated Lima as the capital. It is um, situated in the Andes Mountain at 3,400 meters above sea level. Some people could feel a bit woozy up there, so coca leaf must live in forms of tea is recommended to uh, deal with your altitude sickness. A beautiful hike to do in Cusco is the Rainbow Mountain. As the name suggests, it is a colorful mountain that looks like a rainbow. Makes for an uh, uh, awesome picture. Where to stay? I stayed at Palacio del Inca, which is a beautiful historic hotel in the middle of town with the best service. We had this driver taking us places where we didn't even ask because, you know, when you have a driver, there's a limit of how how further you can go. But the service service was just amazing. It takes you everywhere. There's like free tours, afternoon tea, coca tea leave all day, pisco testing and live music every evening, and an amazing spa when you've been to all these tours. Having a spa like this is super good. Rooms were a bit dark, I would say, but to be honest, I didn't pay full price for it, so I can't complain. And the breakfast buffet was just out of this world. You must then wonder what I mean by I didn't pay full price. So what I did, I had an American Express Platinum, not sponsored, need to precise that. <laughs> this uh, card gives you hotel status as part of the package. And then with the point that you accumulate through spending with the card, you can then take this point and transfer it to the Starwood program, which is the, the chain for which this hotel belonged to. The, at the time, there were like this promotion about, oh, you can book this hotel for all the points or something. Then I, lo- I got lucky to get that room. So it was a very nice uh, surprise for my trip to Peru. But if you're interested about knowing more about this point strategy, I will create a private podcast where you can subscribe and get all the insight and just gauging like I said in the last episode I'm just gauging interest at the minute so feel free to comment on this episode so I can know if there's any interest because obviously I cannot give away all my secrets otherwise I don't have a business you know anyway back to Cusco the food at Peru is obviously amazing so I wouldn't skip on the great restaurant in Cusco. And the one I would recommend is Chicha. It belongs to Astrid and Gaston. These chefs are a couple. I will mention more about them when I speak about Lima. In that restaurant called Chicha, you have to try the river fish ceviche. Because in Lima, the ceviche is obviously a fish that's coming from the ocean. But because Cusco is above the mountain in the Urubumba River, the fish that we'll use for the ceviche will be a different type of fish. So definitely go and try this. Another place that I recommend with amazing food is called Map Cafe. It's actually a restaurant set in the garden of a museum. So you're eating in the courtyard of a museum. It's just super beautiful. Another one is called Cicciolina, which is an Italian-inspired Peruvian restaurant with very nice atmosphere, great wine, super delicious food. Try to get a seat at the chef table so you can observe the open kitchen. And it's like very creative the way they move and everything. It's always the best seat in the house for me. Another one that is quite low-key but very good food is called Pasha Papa. Um, for the evening is night. There's like some live music. The speciality is called Lomo Saltado, which is a stir fried beef inspired from, from the Chinese, actually. So uh, if you go there and sit in the courtyard, have a nice drink and listen to some nice music. And of course, if you want to go purely local, there's a market called San Pedro, where they have the food stand with different type of food, different type of fruits. You can get smoothies, you can get meat. Everything that you want is in the market. And there's a good spot to get souvenir as well. So um, next on the list is Machu Picchu. Cusco is the starting point for most people to to visit Machu Picchu, which is uh, one of the wonders of the world. It's the ancient citadel of the Inca. It's set in the Andes Mountain above the Urubumba River Valley, apparently discovered by an American explorer called Iran Bingham. However, the locals say that they knew about it before and just didn't look into excavating or making a big fuss about it. So it actually has 
doesn't discover it. It was already there. So the site is made of 150 buildings ranging from bath houses, temples, sanctuary, hundreds of stairs, apparently that were built one stone at a time. Very in- impressive building work, actually. The story says that men were rolling up these heavy rocks from the bottom of the mountain to the site. That is quite incredible, considering that the time it takes to go up there from the town below, it takes three hours if you decide to hike it up. And if you if you take the bus, it's about 45 minutes in the very wi- windy road. So it's pretty n- impressive how they, they brought these rocks up there. This leads us to how do you get to Machu Picchu? You can either, um, everyone knows about this, of course, you can either do the Inca Trail, which is a five-day trekking around the mountain and walking from Cusco to Machu Picchu and you get there for sunrise. It's super amazing if you have the time and the fitness, of course. For those <laughs> short on time and fitness, there's a beautiful three-hour train ride from just outside of Cusco to Aguas Caliente, to the town at the bottom of Machu Picchu. I wouldn't hang out there too much. There's nothing to see there. I just hated that place. It's just super busy, stressful. They just, I wouldn't recommend. Anyway, you should take from Cusco. They will drive you to another town called Olaita Tembo, where you take the Vista Dome train from Peru. It's a train that is all made of glass ceiling. The, the view through the glass ceiling as you travel through the valley is super beautiful. They give you drinks, food, and there's some entertainment on the train too. So it's a very fun way for a three-hour ride to, to get to Machu Picchu. Then you, once you get to Aguas Caliente, you take a bus that takes you up there for about $30. And then the entrance is around $50. The train was $100, $130 return. So, well, it's quite expensive. I mean, the one of the ones of the world so that, that's the price we were there during the rainy season so we didn't wait too much to get into the site and it was not that crowded fortunately it's just an overwhelming experience and to be honest I'm glad I got to get my stamp in my passport because you get a stamp a Machu Picchu stamp in your passport when you get there I'm glad that I've seen it now because I have absolutely no desire to return to Machu Picchu not to be negative I still have a lot left to eat and see in Peru but Machu Picchu is a very stressful experience. So is Machu Picchu worth the hype? Personally, I don't think so. It has become this tick of the box type wonder of the world. And it is, it is indeed like super beautiful and interesting to be up there. But except from that, people are super unfriendly in the town compared to the rest of the country. Understandably so though, because there's just an over tourism there that is super overwhelming. Everything is hectic, the food is not good and expensive for what it is and the list goes on. So I didn't feel happy reaching the top of this wonder of the world. For example, when I went to the Grand Canyon, I was just amazing. You you see this thing and you're like, wow, I understand like what's going on here. Anyway, this is just my opinion. Feel free to troll in the comments, but this is what I think about Machu Picchu, but everyone should go. And simply, if you go, you are in Cusco, there's so many more sites around, such as More, the Pisac Ruins, and Sacsayhuaman. There's very nice things to do around Cusco, so def- I totally recommend to go. And also, what is worth doing is there's a train ride that goes from Cusco to Puno in the Lake Titicaca. It's a seven hour train ride. The train is the Belmont on the Explorer, so it's the same one that does the Orient Express. Similar. Uh, it's a luxury train ride with amazing food, brunch to dinner kind of thing. They have entertainment, drink as much drink as you want. So from midday until sunset, you have a few stopover and the scenery is just super beautiful. And the train is fun and you make you make a lot of friends and I will actually release a YouTube video about this so you can relate. Next on the itinerary is Lima and how to spend I will say 72 hours at least three days. Interestingly Lima is the driest city on earth after Cairo mostly covering mist all year due to this has some hot air coming from the coast and this hair is actually mixing with the cold and moist wind from the Pacific Ocean so it's creating this this thing called Guardia which is mean mist is in Spanish. We stayed in Miraflores, which is like the fancy part. I got bored quite quickly there. I mean, the hotel was super nice though. It was a boutique hotel called Otto. They have Otto 1 and Otto 2. It's a very small boutique hotel with nice service. So I do recommend it because they give amazing, amazing tips about food, drinks, everything. The concierge is super cool. But 
it was nothing authentic there, or about Peru, I would say. So that's why I then moved to this house of this painter as a B&B with cute room and balcony who has the, the sea view. So the place is called Second Home, is in the Barranco district. That was just more me, that the, the district is more hip and interesting neighborhood. This is actually a kind of artistic and bohemian area with art house, quirky coffee shops, nice shop, great selection of restaurants with cliff view above the sea, and more of a local feel, I would say. In the evening, I would totally recommend going to a Peña, which is kind of a local cafe slash pub with traditional Peruvian dancer. They all dance on folk, African vibe, live music, which is the essence of that part of Lima. Actually. Interesting fact is that some Peruvian are of African descent and it is transcribed to the music. So if you are in Lima, do not miss this. The one I would recommend is called La Oficina. It looks like nothing outside. It looks like someone else, but you just knock on the door and then César move toi to magic you are in Lima to eat and drink so here's my list of where to go put some of that art save money outside and go to Central it's one of the top 50 restaurants in Latin America they have dishes that celebrate the unique landscape history and tradition of Peru because they use a lot of ingredients locally sourced each ingredient has been picked from all around region in Peru Virgilio Martinez the chef travel around the country to find unique ingredients so he can use in his restaurant because he wants people to understand the biodiversity of Peru through the food. So I can only recommend going for the testing menu. I was mentioning before, if you want to experience the 90 multi-climate of Peru, it will be through food and this restaurant will definitely take you there. Another top restaurant, which has also made the list of the top 50 restaurants in Latin America, is called Astrid and Gaston. These chefs are a couple and actually they have brought the modern Peruvian cuisine around the world by opening many restaurants. So it's nice to go to their original restaurant because you test the menu and on top of what you already paid for, you have all this free stuff and get out there, super full. And at the end of the meal, the, if they are there, we are lucky they were actually there. The chef come and say hi to the patron and ask what you think, what is the feedback and everything. So it's a very nice touch. So if you can, go to Astrid and Gaston. Another one I will recommend is El Mercado. It's top spot for lunch. It's late back if loud <laughs> atmosphere is set in a beautiful courtyard in Mira Flores it's good all the workers come uh, there tourists everyone the seafood there is what to go for don't miss out on the octopus the many ceviches they have the scallop shofa which is a Peruvian version of Chinese fried rice and the kozamaki is a Peruvian sushi made of potatoes super filling but good just go there I know you know I just go there be hungry and don't forget the pisco sour for dinner another recommendation recommendation would be Fiesta, where the food is inspired from the Amazon forest, so it's a bit more exotic type of food. So I, I think there's no further comment here. The food was just delicious and super interesting. So Fiesta. Other places for great food, La Mar Cevichera, the best lunch in the world, in my opinion. Punto Azul is a ceviche-focused restaurant, pure local, very budget-friendly, and is also great for chichas, which is an alcoholic drink made of purple corn. Another restaurant, if you want to to try the proper Peruvian comfort food is based in Barranco district. It's called Isolina in a very busy restaurant at lunch in a beautiful setting of an historical mansion. So that, that was super good, that one. And for drinks, I uh, would recommend the Mad Bar at the BTH Hotel. Hip Hotel, Young Crowd, they do pretty good cocktails. I mean, Peruvian know how to cook, so they certainly know how to make good cocktails. So we try Negroni, Old Fashioned and all this cocktail made with Pisco. Talking about Pisco in my last episode, I was saying that there's this war between the Peruvian Pisco and the Chilean Pisco. I would say that the difference is in test. The Chilean one is super strong and I feel you, you cannot mix it very well in a cocktail, I would say. They, they do a pretty good Pisco sour as well. I didn't experience all the alternative things that you can do with Pisco in Chile. But in Peru, I did. And I think it's probably a bit, I would say, purer or less strong in Peru. And they can do different things. You have different values variety and different level of test and, and strength. So I would say that is the different, but I wouldn't say that there's one that tastes better than the other one. Maybe we should see if there's any Peruvian or Chilean person who listening to this podcast and can give us their opinion. So um, you've eaten all this food and drunk all these drinks. So I would suggest getting out of Lima for a day and burning out all the food with an excursion to Paracas, aka the poor man <laughs> Galapagos, because you, apparently you can see all the spaces that you see in Galapagos. 
people of using Galapagos. It's super expensive. So just go to Paracas. It's a day tour from Lima, which is a three hour drive, but you can stay overnight if you want to. But we just went super early as we wanted to do the quad in the desert and then went on a boat tour to see the sea life and birds and everything. Paracas is also the place where you go to this excursion to see the Nazca line. So the Nazca is the indigenous tribe that was there before the Inca and they draw all this line in the sand, communicate with extraterrestrials apparently. Yeah, so that's that. But it's a very expensive photo shoot just to see some line from the sky and you can actually see them, a couple of them from the boat. So just take the boat personally. I didn't feel it was worth spending that money on that plane. And that plane apparently is moving quite a lot because you obviously want to allow people to see the line from both sides. So it's quite, it's kind of a rocky ride. Feel free to go if you feel like it, but you can see the line from the boat. Bonus tips, Peru caters for all budget and for sure is cheaper than Chile. And I would also recommend to get the local currency, the sole, and try to pay things in cash, tour, food, everything, because you will get good discounts, sometimes even out of the price. Another trick to save time and money is to take the buses overnight in between city. It saves you a hotel price and get you to places quicker. Also, to visit Machu Picchu, if you are there in the shoulder season, it's better to book the tour from Cusco. It's much cheaper than booking online. I know that they recommend to book Machu Picchu in advance, but that will be in, in the high season, the dry season, because it's more school holiday and everything. But if you are in low season, just book it from Cusco. There's always space. And the other one to be booking in advance is if you want to do Wanya Picchu, which is the highest mountain in Machu Picchu, where you have the best view of the site. But that's another hike. So if you want to do it, do it. Otherwise, you all see the same thing. And it's crowded anyway. So you're not going to be the only one climbing up that. Personally, I would pay for this. Anyway, you can also go to market and it's fun sometimes to bargain for clothes and souvenirs. And, but please don't abuse because you can afford it. Most things. Otherwise, you won't be traveling there. Plug sockets. Super good because it's the same as in Europe and the US. So one side is European plug. The other side is the US plug. Double edged. They speak Spanish and many different languages. So for example, in Cusco, they speak Quecha most of the time. But they do understand Spanish. A bit of English, of course. But I would recommend you to download an app called Duolingo and work on your Spanish. Learn the basics. When to go all year round. May to September is the dry season. But it also comes with the crowd. So October to March is better. But it rains a lot. So simply bring your poncho, your hat, sturdy hiking boots. Ground is super slippery in Machu Picchu. So sturdy hiking boots, please. And if you go to the Amazon, be prepared for bugs, mosquito, and all that jazz. Avoid wearing black and dark clothes because it's a mosquito magnet. And bring some DET. All right. I think we are done now with this Peruvian episode of my monologue du voyage. In the next episode, we are going to Nicaragua, sliding down volcanoes. So stay tuned. Also, don't forget to follow, comment, ask questions. Let me know if you are interested in the private podcast. And quote of the days goes to Andre the Shield. Slowly is the fastest way to get you where you want to be. And the top of one mountain is the bottom of the next. So keep climbing. Thanks for listening and live inspired. Oh,